Today we're going to look at a Buchholz relay. Now Buchholz relays are fitted onto electrical transformers, specifically liquid insulated transformers. And the type of liquid insulated transformer that it's fitted on is called a conservator type. The conservator can be seen here on the right hand side, now in the middle, that's this tank here. And the main tank is this tank here. And we can see that the Buchholz relay is mounted between the main tank, the pipe comes out here, and goes to the Buchholz relay, and then to the conservator tank. So it's mounted between the main tank and the conservator tank. And the Buchholz relay is a form of protection fitted to these large KVA or MVA type electrical transformers. It actually has three functions. And I'm going to show you now what they are using an animated 3D model. So let's just skip over to the next model. You can see here is our Buchholz relay again. And what we've done this time, we've taken a cross section. And we can see some of the other components on the top here, such as an air bleed or a gas bleed, terminal control box. And we've also got an arrow here signifying that that is coming from the main tank on the right hand side and going up to the conservator tank on the left hand side. So let's have a look how that looks in real life. We switch back to our transformer model again. I'll spin that around and there we go. So it's coming out of the main tank. Let's try and line this up correctly, excuse me. Main tank here, along there, and going into the base of the conservator tank, which we can see is there and into the conservator tank. So what is it doing? Let's have a look. Well, gas, as you can see on the right hand side, flows out and along this pipe from the main tank to the conservator. Normally, there should not be any gas within the transformer itself. Most of the gas, such as oxygen or nitrogen, or sometimes maybe hydrogen, is what they refer to as dissolved gas. There's actually around nine different gases that you could potentially find within the transformer. And the analysis of these gases is called Dissolve Gas Analysis, or DGA for short. Generally, if your transformer does not have any faults, then you should not be finding any large pockets of gas coming from the transformer tank. But what does happen is, when we do have faults within the main electrical transformer tank, so this could be between the windings and the core, or between the windings themselves, those small electrical discharges will heat up the insulating liquid and it will cause the insulating liquid to break down and when the insulating liquid breaks down it actually produces gases. Now the severity of the breakdown dictates which gases are created. In other words if you've got a high energy discharge this means a, a quite a large fault within the transformer what you'll actually have is a production of for example acetylene. Now acetylene and ethylene, they take quite a lot of energy to make. That means you have to have quite a large fault within the transformer. And that is what creates these gases. When you have lesser faults or faults with not such a large amount of energy, then you will produce different gases. But the key point to remember here is that any fault, small or large or medium, is going to create some sort of gas. Now the amount of gas is very interesting and worth analysing. So you may get a slow trickle of gas coming out of the transformer, which means you have a low partial discharge maybe within the transformer itself. And this low energy fault creates gradually more and more gas. However, you may also get a very large fault and this sudden fault creates a lot of gas very quickly. So let's have a look how the Buchholz relay protects against this type of situation. So let's go over to the left here. We've got a upper float, which is this one here. We've got a lower float, which is this one here. And then we've got a baffle plate, which is this red thing pushing the lower float down here. So let's imagine for a moment, we'll go back up here to our notes. Large electrical faults, the upper float maybe drops, the lower float drops, the baffle plate pushes the lower float down. So that's the first kind of fault we're gonna have. This is gonna be a large electrical fault and what's happened is this large electrical fault has created a lot of gas in a very short amount of time. And because this gas is racing down the pipe, what it's going to do is impact with this 
baffle plate here. You can see it's got quite a wide sort of edge on it. It's going to push against that baffle plate and then that is going to force the lower float down. So a massive inrush of gas pushes the baffle plate down, pushes the lower float down, and then that is going to shut down the transformer. Notice I said shut down, obviously there's going to be an alarm as well, but we're going to shut down the transformer because that is telling us that if the upper float is up and it's just the lower float down and the baffle plate, which is sort of pivoted and pushed the lower float down, those combinations are what tells us that that is a big fault and we need to shut the unit down. However, there's other faults that we can also detect using the Buchholz relay. Again, we're going to use different combinations of floats and the baffle plate. The baffle plate itself is now no longer used. It's only there to detect large electrical faults and to push the lower float down. So now what we're going to use is the upper and lower float. I'll just push play again. Okay, so now we've got small electrical faults. I'll zoom in so you can see that. Upper float drops, lower float no movement, baffle plate no movement. So what's happened here? The baffle plate hasn't moved because what's actually happened is the lower float has dropped. And the reason it's dropped is because the gas has been slowly trickling in. You can see here it says small electrical faults. So this small electrical fault, let's just imagine it's a winding to winding, maybe. It's slowly over time just kept trickling gas in. And as the gas has kept trickling in, it's built up within the chamber until it's moved down, 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 down. It's displaced the liquid. And as the liquid's been displaced, the float has dropped down because the float is buoyant. So the float has dropped down and that has then set off an alarm. We can see here, the two contacts, contacts at the top and contacts at the bottom. And those contacts, when they're separated, will set off an alarm. So we know now that we've got a slow accumulation of gas and that has set off an appropriate alarm. Notice that I said here alarm. We're not going to shut down the transformer at this stage. We just know, okay, the transformer has obviously got a fault and we need to find out what that is. So what we'll actually do is we'll go up here and maybe we'll bleed some of the gas off using this valve and we'll then send that gas off for analysis to determine how severe the fault is and different gases also indicate where the fault is within the transformer. For example, carbon monoxide or CO2 is typically associated with the transformer insulation or the winding insulation. Paper insulation or cellulose insulation is also what it's referred to. So we'll analyze that and then we'll get a better picture of what's happening within the transformer. Now if we go back out, we've got one more type of fault. Let's just push the play button again. Okay, low insulating liquid level. Upper float drops, lower float drops, and baffle plate, no movement. So again, different combination here, but a different kind of fault. So low insulating liquid level, upper float drops, lower float drops. And the baffle plate we can ignore because like I said, it's only used for one type of fault. Let me just make sure that's played to the end. Okay, I'm going to back that up a second just so I can show you what happened. So this type of fault, see the lower float has dropped. So now we've got an upper float that's dropped and a lower float that's dropped. Now the upper float, if that had set off an alarm due to gas, what would happen is the lower float would not drop because at some point the gas starts to trickle into the conservator tank we can see here through this pipe. So what will happen is the lower float will not drop due to a small electrical fault within the transformer and the gas accumulating over time. However, it will drop when the liquid level within this pipe drops low. Now remember the tank, if we go back to our model over here, the tank is below the Buchholz relay. And what you have to imagine is below this section here, or below the top of the tank, everything should be covered in the insulating liquid. That's why it's called a liquid immersed transformer. If I go inside actually, I might be able to show you. Yeah, we can see the connections here from the bushings. So this whole tank, this whole area should be totally flooded with 
liquid or insulating liquid. If, however, we set off that float alarm within the Buchholz relay, then we've got a problem because we know we're losing liquid. And that is a big issue that could lead to what's termed a catastrophic failure. And that's what we don't want. So what we'll do, we'll have this second lower float here and that will set off an alarm. In fact, it will actually set off an alarm and shut down. So this is another shutdown trip. Remember the baffle plate pushing the lower float down was one shutdown. And now we've got two floats dropping together, the top and the bottom. That's another shutdown. So this is a shutdown scenario and it means we've got low insulating liquid in the transformer. If that happens, then we have to take action immediately and find out what's going on.